seen us about your dad in the paper? <sighs> yeah. The solicitor said they can't write any more about him now, though, till the trial starts. Are you gonna go in and see him this afternoon? No. Anthea's going in. I thought it'd be better for them to have some time together. You know, as a couple. It's all right for some, isn't it? Some people can never be a couple again. Katie, what was that about? Apart from the obvious. <sighs> she kicked off on me last night. She said my dad was a cold-blooded amazed and she wanted them to rot in jail. I know she's lost Clint, but she's taking it out on me. Hey. Right, it's an ingrown toenail, isn't it? No, my toenail's fine. I just want to talk to you in private. Uh, it's OK, I'm not some sort of weirdo. And then what do you want? Some information about Robbie Moffat. What sort of information? This and that. Where he lives, where he drinks, that sort of stuff. Why? You don't need to know. But you may be able to guess. Intriguing. So are you going to tell me or what? Ask away. From now on, it's separate flats and separate lives. Get it? Jimmy! Jimmy! Jimmy, will you open the door? Jimmy! She's in a state of shock. Sitting out, everyone. You remember what I was like after Mark died? I was all over the place for months. Mood swings, drinking like an idiot. She was so vicious. I could see the hatred in her eyes. It's not for you. It's for your dad. My dad would never have fired that gun if he'd known it was Clint. Maybe not. Oh, you think my dad was in the wrong and all, do you? I think, um, what he did was awful, yeah. But what I think doesn't make any difference to our friendship, I hope. But he was only protecting his family. He was driven to it. Yeah, and maybe Katie will come to accept that too in time. But for now, you've got to fight for your friendship. When I was grieving, I almost lost Darren. But he and... and you, if you, if you hadn't been there for me, heaven knows where I would have ended up. But this is different. My dad killed Clint. How can I expect her to be a friend after all that? You can. But you can't just sit back and let it all wither away. You've got to go to her and fight to keep her alive. Here I am. Dr Murray. Bang on time. I was just going to ring you. I thought you'd forgotten. No way. Do you have any trouble changing your dinner break? Nah, just had a quiet word with the head. It's all sorted. How about you? You look a bit hassled. Oh, I've been nipping back here all morning, trying to get in touch with Mr Fraser. Um, so why didn't you use the phone in the salon? So you can't want everyone at work knowing our business. So what did he have to say, then? Oh, he seemed a bit wishy-washy about it, especially when I told him our aunt wouldn't give us the bullies' names. Typical. I've made an appointment to see him next week. Where is aunt? It's around my mum's. He seemed relieved I kept him off school. Have you tried to get the names off him? He's still not giving anything away. I can't understand why. If he'd just told us the lads' names, even Fraser would have had them suspended by now. We just have to be patient. Are you ready, Dr Murray? I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if he was out on bail. It's all down to the police and the flaming objections. It makes my blood boil. The police didn't do a thing about the other two break-ins and the involved assault. You know, I don't blame Ron for taking a gun to the lad. Would you have done it? Too right, I would. At defo, if there was a kid in the house. Tell you what, though, wouldn't have got the police involved, cos the body and the gun would have been chucked straight in the river. Well, I don't think he'd have got away with that. I mean, that would be murder. Well, he's on a murder charge now, isn't he? But if he'd have done it my way, then the busies wouldn't have known a thing about it, would they? Hey, they'd have just thought it was some druggy vendetta, and Ron would be with us now having a drink. Do you know what? I just wish he'd have hit him over the head with a table lamp. You know, something that might have killed him. Then there'd be no charges. Did you know he had a gun in the house? 
No. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you got it from? No idea, but I just wish he'd used it on the other brother. Was he in on the breaking as well? I don't know, but Clint was a wimp. He did exactly what Robbie said. Mm, I've seen that in here. So what was Clint doing in our house? Unless Robbie was with him or he told him to do it. Have you asked him? No, not yet, but I will do when I get a chance. Shouldn't you be getting your skates on? Hey. Have you seen the time? Shouldn't you be back at work? Oh, um, I told the head a bit of a porky. I told him I was going with you for tests. Just give me the rest of the day off. You cheeky little sod. Well, I don't think you're going to be spending the afternoon giving my injection a helping hand. Actually, I thought I might be watching the cricket on the telly. Actually, I thought you might remember what we talked about last weekend, cutting the grass, remember? All oh, right, love, can't I wait till after tea? Sorry, no. We're going out. Oh. Jeff Evans has invited us to Bev's for a drink. Oh, you're joking. Our Steve phoned and asked us. And him and Trona are going to be there? Steve will be, but Trina has gone to visit her mother. Oh, I see. So we've got to amuse Billy no mates while Daddy's girl's elsewhere. It was nice of him to ask us. I'd rather cut the grass. Hey, you want to go easy on these? I don't want to get lumbered taking you for a week. That'd be a new experience for you, wouldn't it? <laughs> One I can live without, thank you. Hi, hi. Look who the cat's dragged in. I heard about your wedding reception at Mix. Yeah, well, it wasn't down to me. It was gay crashes. Yeah, you jailbird mates, I heard. Where have you been? I've been waiting ages. Sorry. I've been doing some research on Robbie Moffat. Like what? Well, just enough to set up a meeting in the right place. When? Five o'clock. And you'll come with me. Well, what if he comes more bandit? No, he won't. We've got a gentleman's agreement. Anyway, I promised I'd come on my own if he did. Right. So I think we've got enough time for a couple of bevies, if you pay them. How was the cricket, love? I've taped it. Oh, it looks a lot neater. Thanks. Oh, what is that smell? I can't smell anything. Oh, you've always had a rotten sense of smell. It's that thing. You sure? All right, Maurice. Uh, Jimmy. Yeah. How long's the bug gonna be there? I mean, Diane reckons it's starting to smell. As long as it takes for that cow to move out. Katie. Well, look, I hate this atmosphere between us. You know how I feel. I know your dad's done an awful thing, but I don't want to fall out with you. Not with my oldest mate. So, I wonder if you fancy a nice out tonight. You're just the two of us. And myself. And Clint's lying dead in some hospital mortuary because of your dad. No, I don't mean a nice house. I don't mean clubs or anything like that. Just a drink together. Somewhere where we can have a talk, somewhere quiet. I don't think so. You'd be right. Katie, please at least think about it. I'm sorry. I need hot water. I am not switching it on till you let me use the kitchen. I need a shave and a wash. I need clean clothes. What's going on? Eh, hey, she's put a lock on the earning cupboard door. Won't let me have any hot water. No, not till he lets me do me washing. I'm desperate. Mum, I'll do your washing for you. <laughs> you will not. Dad, I need to do the kids' teas. I can't be managing on a stupid little camping stove. I'll do the teas. Will you stop it? I'll do the tea. Fine. No, you won't. Because we don't need you. Or your kitchen, or your stupid cooker. Right, kids, Sim. Um, fancy a Chinese banquet? Yeah, your favourite, Wills. Right, Sim. Um, just get me pierced. Lindsay, will you go for us? I'm going to stay here. Here. Yeah. Right, come on, you two. I need hot water! So tough! And if you don't like it, you know what you can do. I aren't you ready yet? I'm supposed to be meeting Jeff in ten minutes. Nearly there, love. Quick as you can, Mum. What's up? Will he dock your wages if we're late? Don't be soft. Well, go on, love. You heard what the man said. Never mind tell me, Mum. You go and get ready, will you? I am ready. You're in your wear clothes. My dad always said nobody should be ashamed of the working clothes. I'm meeting Jeff. Exactly. It's not tea at Windsor Castle with the Queen. Mum, will you tell him? Marty, go and get changed. Oh, what's all the fuss about? Just hurry up, please. And you behave yourself. You OK? 
you're not wasting my time, lad. I hope you're not wasting my time. What do you want? You. Mr. Jackie. <laughs> to tell you. Then we can all get settled down, can't we? Is Grandad coming? No. So, ah, I want to cripple him! Enough! I'll have you for this. I'll kill him here yet! You won't. Just try me! Not before I call Keith Hyman as brothers. Do you remember Keith? You glassed his eye out, didn't you? I bet you're him and his brothers would love to know where you live. Get going. We'll let him have another go at you. OK, so I your sister. You got your payback. Me and you are square now. But your dad killed my brother. I'm off to Spain for a bit now. But you can tell him from me. I'm not interested in courts and life sentences. Whether he goes to jail or not. One day, he's going to get his payback from me. Tell him he can never feel safe again. He's all talk. Nana, can I swap my prawn toast for a spring roll? Yes, you take it, love. Just about full up. Can I take the prawn toast down for my granddad? No, I can manage that. Shall I take some sweet corn soup down for him then? No, I'll have that, love. You ate that soup. It means he can't have his Alice's. I don't think all this is going to be too far. Why don't you just accept the offer, eh? Listen, he started this, not me. But you know what? I'm going to be able to manage. It's going to get worse for him before it does for me. I'm going to cope, Lindsay, whatever it takes. This is how it looks from a separate <laughs> <laughs> He said, will we make it for the football? <laughs> This is a bit like meeting the Queen at Windsor Castle. What? We have to wait at Jeff's convenience. He'll be here. He should have been here 20 minutes ago. Yeah, well, he's been in Chester all afternoon, probably stuck in traffic. Well, hasn't that new car of his got wings? Oh, don't be soft. It's got everything else according to you. Very funny. Did they tell you to put me on the insurance so I can drive any car he uses? He did love you. <sighs> Only about 15 times. Did you hear about Ron Dixon? Locked up, no bail? I should think so, no. What's he playing at keeping a gun in the house? Yeah, well, I don't think he should be locked up until found guilty. I mean, how do we know that burglar wouldn't have killed him? There, Mike's in a chair and he got duffed up the last time. I can sympathise with Ron. I mean, if I'd had to put up with what he has, I'd probably have done exactly the same. You haven't got a gun? No, but I would have done him anyway. I mean, there's always something handy to belt a burglar with. Belt him, yeah. Not blow him to pieces. If Ron hadn't had a gun, that lad would probably still be alive. Yeah, but the point is, he shouldn't have been in Ron's house in the middle of the night anyway. He could have been a rapist or a madman, never mind a burglar. Yeah, it's a fact that in 10% of burglaries, the robber uses violence. Same again. Cheers. Doesn't sound like our Steve to me. Just the usual police. Yeah, mate. <laughs> Sorry about this. Been in negotiations for the new dealership all day. Couldn't get away. It's all right. It's good of you to ask us. My pleasure. With our Trina and this fellow going so strong, it's only right I should try and get to know his folks, eh? Did Stevie tell you about my new car, Marty? Uh, yeah, I think he mentioned it. If you stand up and crane your head, you can see him. Yeah. Who's your beauty? Well, someone talking about me again. Uh, my new car. That dark blue one out there. Very nice. 
Mind you, I uh, could have been talking about you. That's silver tongue, this one, isn't he, eh? Is he a relation of yours? Not quite, eh, Stevie? <laughs> no. Sold a new motor. It's like that Razor fella in America. I like the product so much, I decided to buy the dealership. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's enough about work, eh? Well, uh, if you need anything, just give us a shout. Thanks very much. Nice looking girl. And just married to a handsome Brazilian. Oh, I might have known. The best ones are always spoken for, aren't they? Ah, oh, Trina was always telling me that Stevie gets his good looks from his mum. Uh, no offence, eh, Marty? <laughs> he got his brain from me. <laughs> so, uh, how have you been then? Stevie was telling me about your little bit of excitement. You know, that burglar that was shot. It was right next door to you, I believe. Yeah, uh, nasty business. If Ron hadn't had a gun, it probably would never have happened. Sounds like it was a good job that he had. Is that what you think? Well, I believe in looking after what's mine, yeah. Besides, it's a fact that in 10% of burglaries, the robbers use violence, yeah? You're not coming in here till you put that water on. This is stupid. I need my coat for work. Well, it's got to be done, hasn't it? Listen, love, do us a favour. Get up upstairs and switch that out water. Hey, I'm not getting involved. I need a decent wash. Yeah, well, you should have thought about that before you started all of this. I want air out. Well, I reckon she's going to dig her heels in. How long can you carry on like this, Dad? I think it's going to be just as hard for you as it is for my mum. This is nice. Relaxing. The last few months seems to have been one thing after the other. You look a lot better than last time we saw you. Well, it wasn't the best day to meet Stevie's folks, was it? Poor Trina was really upset all night. I believe she's gone to visit her mum. Mum? No, no, no worries, son. I don't mind talking about it. No, actually, I sent Trina over to try and make the peace. Er and her mum have had a few slanging matches over the phone. Oh, that's a shame. Well, the thing with our Trina is she's really loyal to me, so when her mum took off with another bloke, well, she, she couldn't stand it. <laughs> Poor Julie got ill. Is there any chance of you and Julie getting back together? Ty? No, no, honestly, Marty, it's all right. I mean, I feel you should really talk about your feelings, you know? I had hoped that we might sort things out, but, well, I think it's over for us, too. If we'd been able to keep away from the lawyers, then I might have stood a chance, but, well, she's decided to divorce me. Never. Unreasonable behaviour. I suppose that means working every hour God sent just to try and give us a good living. What really rankles is that she wants half of my business, half of everything that I've built up over the years. I mean, she was two years as a receptionist, and I... Sorry, I didn't mean to bore you with the sort of details. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. No, no, I mean, I've only got our Trina to talk to and she's not what you might call impartial. Do you fancy another one, Jeff? Thanks, Marty, but um, I better make tracks. Already? I've got to see that fellow in Windermere. All right, yeah. There might be something in it for the business. So I'll um, love you and leave you then. Nice to see you, Marty. Jeff. And you, die. Bye. Uh, must do this again, eh? Soon. Oh, Stevie, before I go, do you fancy checking out my new CD player? New? Well, the one the factory fitted was good, but uh, wait till you hear this. See you soon, eh? See you. <sighs> what a pain in the... All right, I know you don't like him. How did you guess? Ah, Steve is poodling round after Trona. And now he's doing the same after Motormouth. And what was this all about, eh? An half an hour spare so he could boast at Stevie's folks, yeah? Stevie. He'd bite me head off if I ever called him now. So he's a bit of a show-off. That's for right, please. You two seem to be having a laugh. Oh, yeah, sorry, you'd be too loud. Oh, don't be daft. Brings the punters in, people enjoying themselves. Yeah, right. It's uh, Nicky's night off tonight. She might be out with you, you know, with your being mates. Oh, no, she's out with Jerome somewhere. Oh, good honour. Oh, I feel really sorry for Nick. She's gone through some tough times the last few years. But you wouldn't know to look at her. I don't know how she got over it. Oh, yeah, you mean about a brother and dad being killed? Yeah, uh, I mean, rape, really. Rape? Nicky was raped? Didn't you know? Jack? 
Jackie, can you hear me? Yeah. Police have just been round. So, Miss House, is you all right? Yeah, yeah, your dad's fine. I brought this from Clint's mother. She wanted Katie to have it. What is it? It's an engagement ring. <sighs> I found it in Clint's pocket when he died. Oh, no. Have you put that hot water on yet? No, and I'm not going to. I'm not taking it anymore, Jimmy. I'm fighting back. Aye, aye. I can be twice as awkward as you. Idiot. Oh. oh. Hi. Casey. Before you ask, I'm not interested in going out or talking. I know that. Clint's mum. I've sent the police around with this before. It's in his pocket when he died. I know whether I feel better or worse. Casey, your life's not over. You will have kids one day, but you'll never be the godmother. Casey, I wish there was something I could do. I want to go there. The house. I want to see it for myself. Casey, are you sure you want to do this? Dead sure. And you'll find out what Katie did tomorrow night at the earlier time of 8 o'clock. Next, a false confession with tragic consequences in Cutting Edge. Where's Victoria? Oh, she had to go out. Client to see or something. Yeah, right. How do you feel? Look me for six. I don't know whether I feel better or worse. Would you have said yes? He told him you'd bite his hand off. Well, he asked me what I thought. He was going to go down on one knee and everything. The works, but he didn't know if you'd think he was rushing you. When? Um, I don't know, a few weeks back now. When a few weeks back? You know, before it all kicked off with Robbie. Before Robbie proposed to me, coincidence, eh? Why didn't you say? Well, I was gone, who, but I worried it might be rubbing your nose, innit? See if you hadn't lost enough already. Fitz. I Perfect. How did you know the size? Don't look at me. We had that one conversation and that was it. He sorted the rest of it himself. Katie Moffat. Sounds terrible. I always wondered, did your mum never mind you being ours all the time? Was out from under her feet. What about your Sammy? 
too busy disappearing up her own backside. I can say that I'm a sister. You say you get a punch in the mouth. A little bit of Sammy goes a long way. Besides, you have better biscuits. Oh, cheers. And the run of the Moby. You are so superficial. Sammy's sister, remember? And mine. Yeah, you say stuff like that when you're kids, don't you? When it's true. Casey, it's worth fighting for. So is Clint. I can't believe it. One minute I'm spoiled for choice for families. Dixon's for me dinner, Moffat's for me tea. Now I've got none. No, you're wrong. You can still have both. Oh, yeah. The Moffat's are sound with me now. You sat with them in court, didn't you? You are one of them if you want to be. Yeah, while it's all going on, with the inquest, the funeral, the trial and all that, that will fade. We'll swap Christmas cards and bump into each other on Church Street and feel awkward, have nothing to say. You'll always have the Dixons. Look how sorry your auntie is. And me and Rachel. And you know my dad's always at the soft spot for you. You're dreaming, Jackie. Last time we sat here, we were bladdered. How long is mobile, do you remember? He was already dead. I woke up this morning and for a few seconds, it was like it had never happened. He was going to walk in the door in his boxes, cup of tea in his hand, climb into bed and then... You know when people say that something hit you? This was like physical. It was like something falling on my chest. I couldn't breathe with the shock. I wanted to scream. Okay. Am I the numb? Like I'm watching someone else's life. Oh, it's too much, it's too raw. There's no middle ground. But if it gets too bad, you could always go and talk to Dan. He could prescribe you. Happy pills? End up like Shirley Moffat? No. No way. Well, don't rule it out. I already have. Same with the ale, I'm not going down that road. I'm gonna get you through the night. Do you want one? No, Tar. Hey, do you think that you would have got manis in Spain? On the beach in a bikini? I don't know. I think they would have had kids, eventually. I do time as the godmother and everything. Casey, your life's not over. You will have kids one day. But you'll never be the godmother. Something changed that night. There's no going back. You're wrong. Jackie, when your dad put a bullet through Clint, he put a bullet through this sister's act. Face it. Do you think I'm going to be able to nip in and out of your house, fellas, like I used to? Sit there with a the coffee, looking at the rug, thinking, oh, is that where my fiancé bled to death? Oh, yes, I will have a biscuit if you don't mind, Anthea. I wouldn't make you do that. I've got more sense, more sensitivity. You be treading on eggshells all the time, you mean? What kind of friendship is that? It wouldn't be like that. The thing with you, Jackie, is you're used to everything going your way. And if it doesn't throw a few bob at it and everything will come good, it won't work with this. What are you on about? My mum still had me in polar necks when you were swanning around in your designer shell suits. What has this got to do with... When you were scuba diving with Lord Cuddington, I was seeing a rapist. I'm used to making do. Oh, Casey, don't talk crap. It's the truth. It's crap. You're rewriting history because I've got a few quid at last. I went to school in a mobile shop, the stick I used to get for that. And my designer shellies were knock off from Kirby Market. And you know as well as I do that I've had disasters with fellas. Does the name Shane ring any bells? Oh, another dead boyfriend? Well, that makes us quits. We're equals, Katie. Always have been and always will be. I don't believe you. You'll be singing the wind beneath my wings next. Yes. Well, what do you think? It's weird, you know. It's like he didn't die completely on that night. There's bits of him still left. Bits of his spirit still floating around. But they're all dying off. One by one. We've got your ring. That shows how much he loved you. Time into forever. Right? 
he's the only there was something I could do. You can actually. I want to go there. The house. I want to see it for myself. Oh, it's not a good idea. Why not? Well, it'll upset you. It might. Oh, what if it gives you nightmares? You'd have to sleep to have nightmares. There's nothing to see. It, it's just the house, the same as it always was. They've cle They've searched the place from top to bottom. There's nothing to see. I just feel like it'll help me. I can't explain it. I, I just do. Well, do you want to go right now, or...? Or what? Oh, you've just gone in and we've hit you with this. You haven't had a minute to yourself. Do you want to jump in the bath and catch your breath a minute? And, well, I'll ring ours. And one. No, see if anyone's in. They might be getting the baby to bed or anything. Look, I'm not saying that you'd be in the way. I just mean, you want to be right, don't you? Quiet. Oh, I don't know. Am I talking about my backside here? No, no. You're right. I'll go and get a bath and smart myself up. Who's in? I don't know. No one answered the phone. The radio's on. <sighs> yeah, my dad's idea. Not to the break-ins, lights on, radio on, anything to make the place look occupied. Not that that made any difference. It's probably someone in the bath. <sighs> Katie, are you sure you want to do this? Okay, chill. Just remember, do you fit at that alarm? Yeah. Clean some Robbie. Well, there's no one in. A couple of messages there, do you want to check? No, oh, that's me. Don't take your coat off or anything. I was right. The rug, I, I was right. I must have bought this specially. Do this to yourself. I didn't know if how much it had stayed. Anthea did try and clean it up, but how do they do it? What? Just sit there in the cornflakes when there's a dead man's blood under the feet. <sighs> That's not easy. Big hole. Was there a lot of blood? I don't know. There must have been. It was a lot of bloody. It was died quickly. You wouldn't know much. You wouldn't have suffered. I knew there was a gun pointing at him. He died shouted to war, and that's what all the report said. A few seconds, four or five, you know, it's long enough for your life to flash before your eyes, all 23 years of it. I call that suffering. Me and all. But once it happened, you won't have felt any pain. I checked with Dad and... This is weird. This is weird. Something off the X Files, a, a parallel universe or something. I mean, this terrible, terrible thing has happened, yeah. Life just goes on around it, on top of it. 
literally. But that's what you've got to do. I can't apologise for that, Casey. You've got to do it in your head and all. Oh, it seems so insulting, but, but every day... The baby must have toddled over this. But you've got to get on with the everyday things. They're what'll help you through. They dull the pain. Do they? Yeah. It's like when you go back to work. There might be people who are going to look at you and say, now that's weird. You can look off. Exactly. Because if that works for you, that's all that counts. Yeah, but I don't know if I could go back if you'd been raised at the walking centre. Well, you probably have a choice then. Oh, Mike and them didn't. Where were they going to go away? They couldn't stay in a hotel forever, could they? They could move. Oh, when? Tomorrow? How long does moving house take? I know I'd want to if I was them. Throw all the satins in this house. Well, maybe they will. Once they know how things are mapping out. With your dad. But it's going to take time. You know, they've got to think about Beth and make life as normal for her as possible. Pretend it never happened. No, actually, that is not what they're doing at all. Well, what's this all about, then? You don't know what it's been like. What? Having police all over the house, searching and dusting and confiscating stuff. You know, they don't leave the house like this when they finish. So you'd have to get the vacuum out? We had to wash blood off the skating boards. The police say that they'll clean up for you. Well, they don't. They do the basics. And you've got to do the rest of it yourself. You've got to get down on your hands and knees with a scrubbing brush and a bucket of bleach and wipe away every last trace of a lad that you once knew and loved and miss. And if you think that's easy, I'm telling you, you did that. I helped. It's one of the worst things I've ever had to do in my life. Well, it's the second worst. Betty or Tony was the worst. Casey, everyone's suffering. You've come white as a sheet. I feel a bit funny. Here, take your coat off. I'll make you a drink. Not tea. Do you want a coffee with that? This is fine. Casey, you're shaking. You've got to look after yourself. Let me make you some toast. No, this is doing the trick. Clint was standing here. And your dad was in the doorway. It's quite a long way. Did he walk right in? Casey. You must have been over it with him. Or if not him, Anthony. I mean, did he shoot from there or closer? From there, I think. He was terrified. You're not going to walk right in if you're terrified. Do what you like if you've got a gun in your hand. This was a bad idea. Time to go. No. Look, this isn't about you. If you're having a pop at me, Dad, you're having a pop at me. It isn't the same. It is. Back to this again, aren't we? So everything you've said about friendship and looking out for one another. When it comes down to it, you still say he was right. I'm sticking up for him. That doesn't mean to say that I approve of people getting guns, because I don't. But all the attacks, the worry, drove most of his mind. Oh, so he was deranged? A deranged man with a shooter? Well, I tell you what, we're lucky there's only one dead. He was under pressure, depressed, stressed, call it what you want. Jackie, loads of people get stressed. They come in the surgery all the time, they get a prescription, they kick the cat, they go on a bench, they feel like death in the morning. They, they don't do what he did. Think about it. I've done nothing else for days. If my dad was some blood-crazed madman, why didn't he do it before? How oh, so we've got off lucky up to now? His own son, my little brother, was killed. Mown down by a drugged-up scally of 14 years of age. Why didn't he go out and get a gun then, eh? And blow Jimmy Corkill off the planet? Because he's an ordinary, decent, law-abiding fella who goes into a pub and hands over cash for a sawn-off shotgun in cold blood. Who was pushed to the ends of his tether. Who asks around to find out where you go, who you speak to, how much you pay. Not easy when you don't mix in them circles. And you're telling me you think that's reasonable? 
All I'm saying is I think that there's an explanation for the terrible thing that he did. You're sticking off with Clint for the same reason. You know, my dad's a sick man. He could have had a heart attack or anything. It's a pity he didn't, cos Clint would still be here. Oh, it's great, this grief thing, isn't it? You can say what the hell you like and no one pulls you up on it. Oh, sorry for not towing the line, like, but I thought you were all for being straight with one another. Right, that's it. You've asked to see the police, and I've seen it, so it's time to go. I haven't finished my drink. You have now. You are unbelievable. Your dad made as my boyfriend, my fiance, and you get a comment with me for being upset. I've got a cob on because you're at it again. Rewriting history. You know, you've got Clint down as Bambi, and my dad as Hannibal Flame and Lecter. My dad's tortured by this. You should see him. You know, you can't sleep for grief, he can't sleep for guilt. Casey's not that black and white. But Jackie, it is. Clint's dead because your dad shot him. Because he broke into the house. Don't forget that. He broke in. You don't know that. Well, he didn't have a set of keys. The glass was broken in the back door. You don't know he broke in? Oh, get real. You don't know? Oh, so who did then? Your best mate, Robbie? I wouldn't put it past him, like. He's no mate of mine. Oh, isn't he? Well, you looked very cosy when he was round the other day. Persuaded you he's Mr. Clean, did he? Oh, he did? Oh, so come on, then, what's your latest theory? You don't know Clint broke in. You don't know why he was in this house. <sighs> come here. Someone came round with glass cutters and cut a hole in the pane here and opened the door from the inside. They weren't amateurs. And he wasn't a thief. He didn't need money. Casey, you were going to start a new life in a foreign country. That doesn't come cheap. He had money for that. He'd been working on the building site, and when that packed in, he took anything, labour and driving, anything he could lay his hands on. He had money. Maybe. Definitely. Maybe you weren't it? What? Well, what if the engagement ring took all of his savings and he was scrabbling round for some spare? It's too easy. Say he was a burglar and everyone can switch off. Say he was scum, he deserved to die. He wasn't scum. He was a grafter. He was kind, he was gentle. He was a sort of lad who sneaks into his girlfriend's jewellery box to find out what ring size she is so he can surprise her. He wasn't scum. <sighs> That's what all the papers will say. Be round here interviewing the neighbours about your dad, the pillar of the residence association. They can't. They can't write any more about him now till the trial starts. Is that gonna stop them? They'll just save it all up till then. Casey face facts. Clint was all those things you say. You forget I cared about him and all. Yeah? Yeah. When he told me that he wanted to marry her, I was over the moon. How often can you say that about your mate's fella? Hands on heart that the good's enough. I really thought that, at the time. And now he's a bagel and scumbag. Talk about speaking ill to death. We know what Robbie was like at work on the head. Maybe it runs in the family. Maybe Clint's just better at it. Will you listen to yourself? He never let on about half the stuff Robbie was into. You know, taking that poor lad's eye out and them lads screw me dad's house. And all right, maybe he didn't know about some of them, and maybe he was scared of Robbie. But maybe he knew the lot, and... Maybe you'll run out of things to twist. Well, I'm sorry if it turns out to be true. All it took was a smack in the face for me to see what Robbie was like. I had to wait for the murder. Look, I wish it hadn't happened. I wish me dad hadn't been terrorised. I wish he'd never laid hands on that gun. I wish Clint had never broke in. And I wish you'd gone off to Spain to live happily ever after without any idea of what he was like. I know what he was like. Casey. Casey, wait, we can't leave it like this. Can't we? We can't leave it like this. It needs sorting. I'll walk over with you. Don't come near me, Jackie. Cos right now, I feel like ragging the face off you. I'm not gonna let you reduce me to that. Casey, please. I'm dying inside. I have lost everything in my whole future, and you sit there lecturing me on how to choose my boyfriends more carefully. It's unreal. I didn't mean that. You have twisted everything. You trampled all over his memory and no sister, even a sister as hopeless as our Sammy would do that to get herself off you. Casey, please. Don't touch me, Jackie. <sighs> Casey, we can get through this. Like that. But they never would have been. Who 
Who'd have thought seven years ago when our Tony died? Who'd have thought he could live in the same city, let alone the same close? And our Tony was... Was what? Casey, time's a great healer if you let it. Your Tony was innocent and didn't deserve to die and Clint did. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care if people start to believe your fairy stories. I don't care if the whole of man are parked here against me and I never have another mate in my life. I'd sooner be lonely and have my self-respect. People aren't going to turn against I'd you. I'd sooner remember my Clint the way he really was than stay mates with you. Now, that way, I can look myself in the eye of a morning. Can you do that? Casey, wait. Casey, grow up, Jackie. You can't have everything your own way. Now, me and you sisters and all that, it's finished. Dead in the water. Google something decent. Gives us a chance to have another talk. Doesn't seem much point. Once your mother ships out of this place, everything will be back to normal, OK? Casey, you're drunk. No! I'm plastic. Do I feel any better? Come near me again and I will tell Nikki everything. Chapter and verse. Don't forget, Sunetra Saka, who plays Nisha, is ready to chat online now. Log on to channel4.com forward slash talk. Next, cooking is a yummy experience with Nigella Bites. It's an early doors. I thought I could treat us to a microwave tea later. Not for me, thanks. Well, shall I Google something decent? Gives us a chance to have another talk. Doesn't seem much point. I won't say that. I'm in a tidy. I'm moving out. No. Ready for your 2.30? Act. Time of the month. Um, at least it should be. Uh oh. It'll be fine. How late are you? Two months. I'd hardly be surprised. Well, at least we're still talking. I know we haven't resolved anything yet, but... We never will. I can't just give up on all those years. If I stay, we'll end up having the same conversation every day. Round and round in circles. We'll end up hating each other. But you're asking me to turn me back on me dad. He's not just some cuddly old little dad in a car, you know, is he? He shot my fiance. <laughs> Murdered him. He was terrified. In fear of his life, Amber. See, it's happening already. Like I said, we'll end up hating each other. But it's unworkable, Dad. Do you want a bicky? These ground rules, they're just. The... Oh, what, mad? You sound like your mother. Because you left the padlock on the door, the kids had to have sausage rolls for the breakfast from the garage. Oh, well, you've got a staff discount, don't you? Joke! J O K E! Yeah. And Kylie's homework was left on the city. I had to lie to a teacher. Dad, we need access to the kitchen at all times. Love, once your mother ships out of this place, everything will be back to normal, OK?
police, they took us seriously, then. Yeah, well, they got you these days, haven't they? Aye, aye. Daddy Warbucks giving you the day off. Time in Lou. Wants me to go to some business dinner with him tonight. Watching Lair, eh? Christmas dinner. Stay to you. I've just been up to school to see about our aunt. I've told him, if you don't fight back, you get battered. Yeah, well, I'd rather you didn't tell him. I would get. So what's Fraser gonna do about it? Not a lot. And won't name names. He's so terrified of them lads. He's got to toughen up. Survival of the fittest. He's just a kid. Yeah, well, he might as well learn now. I've had lads down the showroom giving me attitude, and I'm like, Pfft. I'm going for a slash. Who will you go? Nisha's. I've got all the sources. At least let me give you a lift round there. This is unreal. Be down me. Best not. Unless you need me for anything. <laughs> for everything. Don't go. <laughs> I have to. It's me dad. And he killed my fiance. <laughs> and you're still standing by him. But I want to support you both. And trash Clint. This is the end, isn't it? I'm not in the mood for drama club. What about the Hudden club? I had to join the Mother Man Mums. It's not funny. Who's laughing? She's got the mother after Pip. Will you stop panicking? Periods go when you're under pressure. Late nights revising for GCSEs, it's bound to take its toll. Maybe. It's a fact. Stress, fatty diets, any shock to the system and they can just stop. Well, at least be sure this time. We'll get a kit on the way to yours. I've only got £2.40 on me. Well, the bad news is, my dad went off with a younger woman. But the good news is, he feels awfully guilty. Joan Collins. <laughs> How old? I don't know. Any chance you could leave the padlock off for the night, Dad? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, go on. It's her birthday today. How old? Just while you're on the shift at the bar, please. Go on, have a guess. <sighs> I don't know. Sixty... 62, 63. 68. Looking good, Joni, love, looking good. Dad, you can't keep this up, you know. There's another one, Rosemary Clooney. <laughs> Will you put that paper down, please? How old? Lindsay, bring the bleach up, will you? I thought I told you to bolt the door. I forgot. Yeah, well, tell her to do what? The kids were just made up this morning. Go on, Rosemary Clooney, how old? I don't know, Dad. Born 1928. So what does that make her? 73. Locked out of their own kitchen they were. Still, as long as you're genned up on celebrity birthdays, that's all that matters. Will you leave it, Mum? Hey, I'll tell you something. You could cut these out every day. Make a great after-dinner quiz. That'd be lovely, that, wouldn't it? Have our tea on the camp and stove, huddle around the telly in the freezing cold bedroom, guessing the age of a load of people we've never even met. You want to patent that one, Dad? It's a winner. Door! Jimmy, be reasonable. Close the door behind you. You must understand this isn't working. Jim, they've said you're making steady progress. Look at me, Jimmy, please. They'd say if, if they saw you like this. What? <laughs> Reading the paper? No, you know, all this bolts and chains. <sighs> I don't think steady is the word I'd use. Oh, really? Jimmy, it can't be right. <clears throat> Here's a couple of words I'd use. 
do one. Jimmy. Speaking to me like I'm some sort of kid. No. Oh, what is it? Softly, softly, catchy monkey. What's the use? is thicker than water. They're cliches because they're true. Yeah, but she has blood. She's family. Well, she's not family, though, is she? <laughs> Ultimately. I'll do anything for her. Except turn your back on your father. Well, yeah. <sighs> Katie needs time and endless patience, just like you gave me after Susanna's death. sure about this? Yeah, you can get the next bottle. You know what I mean. What, you think I should be keeping a low profile? No. Got nothing to be ashamed of. No, I just meant maybe you want to go back to the flat, you know, unpack your stuff, settle in. Nah. I say that till tomorrow. Fill a few hours in my so-called life. Rich is heading to keep busy and then I'll be fine. Brilliant, isn't it? It's hard to keep busy when you've packed your job in, but just not a burst of balloon. Katie, your job's safe. You can come back as soon as you feel ready. Says who? Says me. I hire and fire, remember? And you're hired. <sighs> Great. Every cloud has a silver lining, eh? I'll tell you what, why don't we put a cork in that and go and get a takeaway? My treat. Nah. Why don't we drink so much that we have to go home in an ambulance? Come on, Nish. Keep up. It's happy hour at six. I'm a happy hour, me. <laughs> There's some left in the pan, love. Arm um, stuff, thanks, Mrs. Murray. I'll probably have the munchies when I get in. Nouvelle cuisine place, is it? <sighs> I'll stick it in the fridge, Steve. Help yourself. Want some cheesecake, love? Oh, please, Mr. Murray, thanks. Miss Petson, Miss Petson, thank you. Shouldn't you be brown nose and true as dad? Oh, kiss my face. Hey, we've got a guest, remember? <laughs> Jeff picking you up? Yeah, he said he'd beep. Oh, what, isn't he coming in for an aperitif? Ignore him, he's jealous. <sighs> Uh, I don't think so. Hey, you should have seen Jeff today. One of the lads was kicking off about tea breaks. <laughs> Soon got his eye wiped. Not by you, I hope. Not yet, no. <laughs> That's me. See us. Happy schmoozing. Not yet. Now, don't tell me I imagine that. No. Jeff's definitely starting to rub off on him. What's that thing next door? Shouldn't you be out robbing Belisha Beacons and making apple pie beds? The night's young, Bev. Mm -hmm. Tell that to Katie Rogers. Slow so before tea time. She's steaming. Mm. Moved in with the naughty nurse. Oh, yeah? Mm. Feel really bad taking the money off her. But not quite bad enough, though, eh? I mean, look at her. She can down it for all it's worth. Clint's still gonna be dead in the morning. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta get totally destroyed. Dark horse, wasn't he? It's lovely. Wants to surprise me. Did that all right. Katie, shall we make a move after these? You're drinking me under the table. It's not what I had chosen, but I'll never take it off. One day you will. You'll be happy again. Now, I know for a fact that you don't believe that. You hate men. Not all men. But there are some horrors out there. Just go to the toilet. <sighs> Why don't you stop torturing yourself and go and change the barrel? Ooh. Must be getting old. It's always been like a nice box in here. <sighs> Did I? I've never read so much in my life. Be the news on in a minute. What else does he have to do to you? A bit close to the screen, really, aren't we? Dwarfs, this room. Mum, how much more humiliation can you take? You'd be surprised. Well, he's offered you a way out. He's all heart. Why don't you just take the money and go? Is that what you'd do? Under the circumstances, yeah. 
The one thing I've perfected over this last 27 years is stay in power. I'm not about to roll over and die now. Do you know what? I would pay someone to go to the toilet for me. Katie, don't you think you've had enough? I'm still conscious. <sighs> Bottle of shabby, please, Bev. I told her to go easy, but she's not having any of it. I think we should have a ways with her. Well, I'd leave it to it. Niece, are you ignoring me? Sorry about that. What with my clumsiness and your amnesia. What are you talking about? You forgot to mention your girlfriend was raped. Like they say, the devil's in the detail. What's going on? And the night coordination must be on the blink. Too many nights on the A, like. Had a spill of J. You want to be more careful, Jerome? It's nothing. In case you're about to go home, I'll see you later. You know, I might just uh, shoot home and change my top. It's going right through. You can borrow a bar t shirt if you want. No, he's a style guru, remember? Yeah, look, she is anyway. See you later. She threw that drink at him. Oh, go away. Bev, what have you said to Nisha? Nothing. Hardly. You promised me. Well, I just dropped a little hint in a shell like that. Oh, it's nothing heavy. I was just chatting about rape, were you? Then what, my name pops up. It's work to treat. She's stormed off, and he's chasing after her like some pathetic lapdog. Can't we just talk? Yes, come back, you. Easy, Nish. I was, yeah, but suddenly I feel really picky. Look, what difference does it make to you and me? And what do you think you and me will do to Nikki? It's a bit late in the day for a conscience, don't you think? Nice. She'll never have to know, will she? You'd really like that, wouldn't you? So why are you saying it's all right to cheat on your girlfriend as long as she hasn't been raped? The stakes are higher for you two, and you know that. That's why you didn't tell me. It's a bit inconsistent, your model cold. I wish I'd glassed you. The beer was fine, thanks. Nicky didn't buy the clumsy old me line for a minute, so you better get back in there and dust down that impersonation of a really nice guy that you do. Certainly had me fooled. Look. What about us? <laughs> Come near me again and I will tell Nikki everything. Chapter and verse. <sighs> Dead handy, these. That poor today must stink the place out. Oh, I try not to dwell on it. I'm a cramping his style. I am, aren't I? Mom, who do you fancy at school, Michelle? Just Daddy Frank and really. Does he know? Oh, why, yeah. Said he'd rather have his eyes gouged out. That's <laughs> me that drowns in there. Use our toilet. I wanted a shower. Well, give him ten more minutes. Like my mum says, cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> Hi, kiddo. Got my message, then? Yeah, you sounded all keyed up. Yeah, well, you know, I just wanted to see you. Do so. Very oh, nice one. Hey, listen, uh, knock off in half an hour. Ooh, well, I'll uh, meet you on the end, cush. I tell you what, why don't we make it a single vodka and a large tonic? Because that's not what I ordered, and the customer is always right. Now, are you monitoring the agents, are you? I haven't puked at anything. I know. I'll bring you over. Yeah, you'd better add. So for all you know, I could have a gun. And you know, they're rife these days. Great. Now Misha's got off, she's on a tilt. And he's felt sad. Hey, thanks to me, Nursey jumped him. The wrong way round. Uh, sorry, love. Nong and Brandy. Now, all he'll do is feel he's stuck with me. I wanted him to go and dump her. What? And say bye-bye to sex on tap with some racy nurse? Or not. He would have chosen eventually, gone for what he really wanted. Oh, listen to yourself. I was playing the long game. <laughs> the wrong game? All you've done is force him into a corner. Now, all he's doing is settling for me because the choice has been taken away from him. You know what? For a bright girl, you're not awful naive. She's not. 68. She is. She looks great, doesn't she? <laughs> so next birthday, she's. <laughs> I'm only doing this for peace of mind. Yours mainly. You've got a wee onto the wand. Can't wait. Knock, knock. Hot chocolate, ladies. 
Oh, great. Thanks, Mrs. Murray. Thanks, Mum. I've told your dad there's a queue around the block. Be and listen to the cricket, if you don't mind. How long does it take? Minutes. So much for a relaxing drink. A man walks into a bar, says a pint of mild, a pack of smoky bacon and a son of shotgun, please. And you don't love it. Come on, please, let's get back up to the flat. I'll make you a strong coffee and you can sleep it off. A coffee? She wants to make me a coffee, the murderer's daughter. Casey, you're drunk. No, I'm palatic, but do I feel any better? No. Oh, that's OK. Oh, Jackie always comes up smelling the roses. I can't hear me back on me dad. Your dad is a murderer. It was an accident, right? It was a terrible accident. You just come home with me. Hey, dad murdered my fiance. Shot him dead. I am not messing. Front page for two nights. And then a pack to close and win and he moved it to page three. Can you believe that when my Clint's dead? Will you just stop it? Don't touch me. She said we can be mates. Be a mate with you. Be like dancing on Clint's grave. <laughs> Can't you get it in? <laughs> <laughs> You'll wake the kids! Hiya, <laughs> Jack. Oh, I like the house coat. It's very homely. <laughs> Congratulations, Jimmy. You're finally at rock bottom. Me cousin. Yeah, well. That's nutters for you. Hey, I'm, uh, I'm very taken with his extension. <laughs> Ooh, nature cool. Jimmy's got his own ensuite now. Ooh, down here? Al fresco, I think they call it. <laughs> oh, it sounds like Cousin Jackie's gone to bed. Very wise. <laughs> she needs all the beauty sleep she can get, that one. Uh, don't. Oh, you're not going to make me beg, are you? Please, Cheryl. Oh, go on. I can't do this, Cheryl, I'm sorry. Think I'm having deja vu? It's not you. Sorry. You still cabbage? Tormenting her like that. What was I thinking of? Oh. Well, not me, that's for sure. Well, never mind. I won't take it personally this time. I wanted to degrade her. Rub her nose in it. Oh, thanks a bunch. She's still the mother of my children. <laughs> you are, aren't you? That is such bad luck. What am I going to tell my mum? She's desperate for a baby. My age. And what? You and her. How low can you go to? If you want to keep the baby, you've got to tell her soon. There's no way I'm telling her now. Ron Dixon had a gun in the house, and he killed someone. So that makes him a hero. I hope they throw away the key. Do you really want me to go? No. 
And that next time for Brookside is Tuesday at 8.30. Also, there'll be no Brookside next Friday. It moves to Thursday at 8.30 instead. Next tonight, Ross is flirting with disaster in Friends. Brookside. mind, haven't you, love? You get that, Steve? What's up? Nothing. Well, there must be something. I just didn't sleep much, that's all. How come? Uh, this from a man who works in a school. She's in the middle of a GCSE, you dump. Oh, don't worry about them. You'll sail through them. That's right. Put me under more pressure. As long as you do your best. Michelle's coming round after. We're going to do some more revision. Is that all right? As long as she's gone by tea time. I'm doing a bit of a spread for Steve's birthday. So we'll have time to get the shopping in and do the injection. Do you have to talk about that when I'm having my breakfast? What's up with you? Nothing. Reds are at home. Marty. You know what they're like. She's worried about her exams and she's sick of us going on about IVF all the time, that's all. Is that the postman? Yeah, he had the right gob on him. I'm not surprised. He probably didn't know whether to post it or put a couple of inches on it. <laughs> it's from Katrina. Go away. Mm, I want to go back to bed. Here, take this and look on the bright side. What bright side? I make the clients look healthy. Oh, I just hope no one comes in. It was there last night. I made a right show myself. Maybe you should ring Jackie and apologise. Why? I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry about her anyway. So what are you sorry for? I'm a grieving woman. I should have acted with a bit more dignity. <sighs> yeah. I'm surprised you've got the nerve to show your face. Why? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? <laughs> no. I'll be out all day. Tell Lindsay not to worry. I'll pick Carly up from school as per the rota. Where are you going? The health centre? No. <laughs> but you should be. You'll need a checkup now. Why? I'm fit as a fiddle, me. After last night, you'll be riddled with every disease known to man. You are? Man beast. <laughs> Have you got something on your mind? I heard you. Um, heard what? You and her. How low can you go to me? Well, not that it's any of your business. We're separated now, and you've got no say in what I do, or what I don't do. But just for the record, just so you know, nothing happened. Sound familiar? Bye. Look, it won't always be like this, you know. I know. Soon I'll get a job and we'll be laughing, eh? Even if you don't get one? No, I will. There's loads of help for ex-prisoners out there. Just take a bit of time. Why don't you come down to the salon after work and we'll go for a drink? What with? Well, I'll pay. No, I'll just wait till I get my gyro on and we'll do it, eh? See yourself. Can you send the next one in, please, Katie? She'll see you now. Cheers. I just wanted to say sorry. You've said it, so now you can go. I should have told you about Nikki. I'm working, Jerome. I know. There are sick people out there, genuinely sick. This won't take a minute. And you think they should wait because of you? Look, why has this got so heavy all of a sudden? We're talking about rape. That's about as heavy as it gets. OK. Look, you feel sorry for her. I mean, I feel sorry for her too, but what's that got to do with me and you? It makes me look bad. It makes you look even worse. Yeah, well, you never worried about looking bad before. I didn't know how bad it looked because I didn't know what everybody else knew. 
To me, Nikki was just this slim, gorgeous blonde who I thought could probably look after herself. And she can? Jerome, I have dealt with a rape victim before. Just the one, but it was enough. And I've talked to people about what happened to Nikki. Who? Katie, Bev. You didn't tell them about us, did you? No, and I'm not going to now. I'd be too ashamed. Look, Nisha, this all happened years ago. Well, according to Katie, if it hadn't have been for you, Nikki would never have got through it. Yeah, but she did. So isn't it about time I was allowed to leave it all behind or am I stuck with it for the rest of my life? No, Nikki is. You can leave it behind any time you like. If you want to finish with Nikki, just do it. But don't you dare, don't you dare use me as an excuse. Me and you never existed. Now get out. Look, Nisha, just give me a chance. Get out. So soon. Thoughts, please. Just having a quiet moment. Susanna? Six months. Don't think of it as often as I should do, but it, it's still there, of course. It's bound to be. I mean, you're still grieving. And what have we got left to remember at by Lance? Two lovely kids. Well, they're forgetting her already. Every day, she's becoming more distant memory to them. When they grow up, all they'll have left is photos and a headstone. And you. I'm not even mentioned on the headstone. But you can make sure they know the truth. Exactly. Do you think Bev would let me borrow that trolley? Yeah, probably, but I'm using it at the moment. Oh, it's all right. I'll call back for it later. What do you want it for? I've just got something heavy to move. What's going on? Kevin, I've had enough. Can't live like this anymore. You decide to take the money? I'm taking me son. And I'm getting out of here. What made you change your mind? <laughs> what he got up to last night while you were at work. What was he doing? So he was doing it with. That's what gets me. He had someone round. That's right. A woman? <laughs> Barely. You are getting divorced, aren't you? Oh, that's right, so we can sleep with her we once. I don't care, I'm past caring, I'm well past caring. I'll wash my hands of the barrier. I mean, you're separated now. <laughs> By a ceiling! A paper-thin ceiling! He was downstairs having sex with Cheryl Smith while his family was up here listening! No, we give him some credit. Oh, here we go again. Take his side, won't you? Daddy's guilt and the bitter end. He wouldn't do it, Cheryl Smith. Oh, you can't believe he'd do that, but you can believe I'd do it with Shelley. Why won't you listen to me? Why can't I make you understand, Lindsay? I've done nothing wrong. I didn't betray you. I couldn't betray you. Everything and everyone I care about is in this house, and I've been locked out of it. Lindsay, please. Do you really want me to go? No. What are you going to do? I don't know. There's only two options when you're pregnant. You can't just sit and wait for it to happen. Shh, it's me, Mum. It's only us. If you want to keep the baby, you've got to tell her soon. I know that. And if you want to get rid of it, you're probably going to have to tell her anyway. There's no way I'm telling her now. Hiya, girls. Don't worry, we won't be long. We just want to get this stuff in the fridge. What do you think? Very nice, Mrs Murray. So it should be at that price. I'll save you some, Michelle. We've got enough to feed the 5,000. Better too much than too little. He doesn't want a fuss. He wants a quiet family do. That's us and the two-watt bulb. You be nice to her tonight. I am always nice to the lovely throne. Does your dad get your mates when you come round, Michelle? Oh, we used to, but not anymore. Yeah. Learned his lesson, has he? No, he's left home. Oh. When did that happen? A couple of months ago. Sorry to hear that. Thanks. Uh, I won't be a minute. I'm just popping upstairs. Yeah, um, I'll see you later. Uh, Mr Murray? Yeah? You forgot to put the food in the fridge? Oh, I don't. Do the honours, would you? 
They act on weird or what? That's why I can't tell them. Why? Because of what they're doing right now upstairs. What are they doing? Have a look. Are these my kids? No. What then? You know, my mum's been trying to get pregnant. Yeah. She's on the IVF now. That's what those are for. I can't tell them. Not now. Oh, I'm sorry, Mum. I'm sorry. That was so horrible to you. I don't want to leave this house. I don't want you to go. But I can't live like this, Lindsay. It's not fair to the kids. I know. When he comes in, will you have a word with him? Try and make him see sense. I'll try. If he doesn't listen now, I'll, I will go. I'll take Will and I'll go tonight. Hey. I'll do my best. Ten on four. Are you getting changed? I will go and get changed when we all go down the swan later. Can't you make an effort? It is 21st. You're in your work here. I've been doing this. What have you been doing? Uh, excuse me, but I've been doing the work of two men this week. And what two men are they? The caretaker and the doctor. You've got the bruises on your bum to prove it. I'm going now, Mrs Murray. Oh, I'll see you, Michelle. Sorry I've had to kick you out. Oh, it's OK. We've got loads done today. That's good. And don't forget, if you want to come again, that's no problem. Thanks, Mrs Murray. Hello? They're here. Hiya, love. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Shame on what I bought you. <laughs> oh, that's lovely, that is. Look, Matt, look what Katrina got in. It's a bracelet. It's, um, very nice. It yeah, fits the image in the showroom. And it's dead heavy. Yeah, I'll let me take your jacket. It's all right, we're not staying long. You're not? Um, Jeff's taking us off for a meal. I, I thought you were having your tea here. I know, he'd already booked a table and he only told us this afternoon. You haven't gone to any trouble, have you? No, just sausage rolls, stuff like that. Oh, well, that'll keep on it. We can have it tomorrow. As long as you haven't cooked a meal. Right, best go and get changed. It's got to be there for seven. Come on. Trying to stand for your tea, Michelle? Yeah. Come on, pair of the dog. I'll have you feeling better in no time. It won't. It's a medical fact. It works. It might cure me hangover. Won't make me feel any better. Hiya. Oh, yeah. What can I get you, babe? Uh, two pints of lager, please, Lance. I should have it half, thanks. Oh, pints and half, then. Ladies, your wish is my command. See? It's all forgotten. It's on the front page of the Manor Park Reporter. How can it be forgotten? I meant last night, forgotten. Maybe Jack will be right. Maybe they're all right. Clint was a no mark and I was just too stupid to see it. Maybe the first time I'd been wrong about a fellow, would it? He may have been a no mark, but he was not a burglar. What was he doing there that night? Casey, babe, uh, can I say something? What? It doesn't matter what he was doing there. So maybe I'd gone to pinch a video or something. So what? Well, there's a video more important than a life now. Ron Dixon had a gun in the house. And he killed someone. So that makes him a hero. Ooh, I hope they throw away the key. You're only saying that because you don't like Jackie. I'm saying it because I can't abide violence. Although, in the case of Jackie Dixon, I'm willing to make an exception. Oh, nice one for last night, by the way. Oh, no, these are on me and Ollie. Huh? I'm not doing your homework. <laughs> Burger and chips for tea. It's nice. Yeah, well, just a little treat for my favourite granddaughter, eh? Go and get out of that uniform, eh? Do you want to go and play with Will for a bit? Dad, I need to speak to you. Hi, right. Come in. Put the kettle on. What's that? What does it look like? Let me handle this. Well, it's in my way. I hope you're going to move it. I am. One way or another, it won't be there for much longer. All oh, right. 
You don't tell me you've persuaded her to see sense. No, she's persuaded me. What do you mean? She's persuaded you. Persuaded you what? What are you doing? No more of this. Hey, close that. No. You're not coming in here. Lindsay's on my side. I'm not now. on anyone's side. It's just that. Just what? Well, what we've been putting my mum through, it's not fair. I haven't put her through anything. You broke me out last night, Jimmy. Did you have sex with Cheryl Smith? No, I didn't have sex with Cheryl Smith. That's all in her dirty little mind now. Well, my mum didn't have sex with Shelley. I'm certain of that now. I'm not interested in Shelley. Then why don't you and my mum give it another go? Shelley is irrelevant. Well, she's the start of this. No. This all started on our first night out. I turned up late. I bought her a cherry bee. She ate the cherry and then she stabbed me in the back of the hand with a cocktail stick. And we have been fighting and arguing and bouncing off each other ever since. Driving each other up the wall. That's how we lived then. It was great. Lots of ups, lots of downs, never dull. She likes it like that. She needs it like that. She manipulates it to be like that. Yeah, well, it can't be like that anymore. I've had a breakdown, and I've got to stay away from her just to keep my head straight. Thanks for trying, Liz. Get back to me packing. Think you're playing that song? I couldn't get out of it. You couldn't tell him you were coming back here for your tea. But we never made any big plans or anything. Me and your mum have spent our dinner running around the shops, getting all kinds of poncy salads and stupid dips. Well, I told her not to go to any trouble. And we almost missed our injection. She said she'd only done a few sarnies. Well, for your 21st? On a royal visit from Lady Throney, use your head, son. She hasn't stopped since she got back from work. Look, I'm sorry. It's Di you should be apologising to. He's Katrina's dad. He's me boss. He's been really good to me. And we haven't. He wanted to treat us. I couldn't say no. And another thing. What now? Only woolly backs wear gold bracelets, and you know it, you Texan. Look, Dad, if you don't like my girlfriend, why don't you just come out and say it? Doesn't make sense. If you're going to rob a house, what would you take with you? A crowbar, maybe a screwdriver, glass cutters. What did Clint have on him? An engagement ring. Don't you think that's strange? Yeah, a bit. And another thing, he couldn't have gone there to rob anything. He wouldn't have had time to sell it. We we're leaving for Spain the next morning. I'm going to find out what happened that night. I owe it to Clint. He's the victim in all this, not Ron Dixon. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to pay that mere and scumbag a visit. He's in jail. Don't get anywhere near him. I'll find a way. Well, have you got all your toys packed you want to take? Get his coat, Kylie, will you, love? Good girl. It's not getting through to him, Lindsay. I've tried, I've failed, you've had a go, you couldn't do it either, so that's it, it's over. Am I right? Yeah. Right, I'll phone a taxi. That she's got a point. This is no way for the kids to live for their sake. Let's get rid of the lock and forget about the stupid rotors and get rid of that toilet in the garden. It's all madness. No, it's not. People don't live like this. It's two flats. One upstairs and one downstairs. She wouldn't move out, so it was the best solution. Nothing mad about it. And that toilet was only temporary. As soon as I could afford it, I was going to have a proper bathroom fitted down here and a kitchen fitted upstairs. But if she's leaving, there's no need for me to do that now. Oh, are you going to your vowels? What do you care? I need access to my son. And we need to know where to send the cheque. For your half of the house. You can keep the cheque. The only reason I'm moving out now is for our will's sake. But I will fight you in court for this house. I will fight you for everything that's rightfully mine. And I'll win, Jimmy. I will win. We'll see. Listen, um, I could do with a hand. Uh, are you free tomorrow night? Yeah, but what are you moving? 
Susanna's headstone. Are you having me on? I want to replace it with something more suitable. Look, aren't there people who can do that for you, Max? You know, professionals. Are you going to help me or not? Vance, I've got a vodka and coke and a glass of orange. Just don't run there in a big bag. Just put the trolley in the land. No, hang on. Cheers. So I made to change my book on house? Well, I had a bit of luck at the job centre. You've got a job? Yeah, man, I might have once. Was there any doubt? What kind? You can have this. Oh, are you sure? Well, it's worth it to have my room back to myself. <laughs> Don't cry, Mum. Nana and Granddad are always having arguments. She'll be back. Not this time, Carly. Not this time. That'd be great. I get to wear my own uniform, get my own badge with my name on, and all the burgers I can eat. Isn't bigger burgers the one where Craig used to wear? Yeah. Well, didn't the boss stitch him up? Well, yeah. He got him sent down for having his hands in the till. Yeah, but it's under new management now. It'll be okay. Yeah. But you're right, it will. It's the only thing that was going, you know. It's best than being on the jail. It's a start, isn't it? Listen, I know you didn't want Leave me alone. But I've been thinking about what you said earlier, and you were right. What I've been doing, it isn't fair. Not to you, not to me, and definitely not to Nikki. And it all comes down to this. If Nikki hadn't have been raped, would I still be with her? Or would you? I'm too young to be settling down. I mean, if I'd have met her when I was 30, then yeah, because I really do like her. But what's been happening between me and you, it's been the most excitement I've had in years. But it's over, Jerome. So whatever you choose to do with Nikki, don't be thinking that me and you can pick up from where we left off. OK? Yeah, OK, whatever you say. But I just want you to know that I've come to a decision. I'm gonna finish with Nikki. No, Max, no way. Why not? It's seriously weird. The headstone she's got isn't right. I just want to change it, that's all. Can't you ask the people who run the cemetery to do it? I don't trust them. If they caught us breaking in. We won't be breaking in. Just be going there when it's quiet, that's all. Just change the headstone for something more appropriate. Max. I know you're a man in mourning, and, and I would do anything to help you. But I'm not carrying a headstone through a graveyard in the middle of the night. Look, Lance. No, Max. Look, I've done you favours. Yeah, I know. I took you and your sister in when you had nowhere to go. I know. So you owe me one. Want me to get back with me? She won't want him back. I thought you'd come here to listen to what he had to say. I came here so this merchant's come back and listen to what I've got to say. You think it was an accident? It was an accident. You let me swap it for a ring. Okay. An engagement ring. What? Always caught in the Brookside trap tomorrow at eight o'clock. Tonight's Big Brothers and our wet ten on four. First, though, ever paled at the thought of making a big speech. Tonight's cutting edge catches up with those who've been tongue-tied and traumatised before they even reach the podium. Next.
Marky. Well, I wouldn't normally stoop to this level. Chatting to you in public is top of the no-no list in my book. I'll never forgive what you did to Arlea. What do you want, Lance? I'm worried about Max. He's about to do something really, really stupid tonight. Aren't babysitting for him tonight? It doesn't matter what I say to him. He's determined to go ahead with it. With what? He's going to break into the cemetery. Oh, what? He wants to replace Susanna's headstone with one that he's had made. And he wants me to help him. I thought he'd got over that idea. He's borrowed a trolley from the bar to help him shift it, and, and now he won't give me it back. Do you have a word with him? I've tried and tried, but he takes no notice. We'll yell him round there later, so I'll speak to him then. Thanks. Hey, what's up with you? Nothing. You've been acting really weird. Have I? Yeah. I've been nursing the dregs that pine for over an hour now. What's up? Nothing. Jay, I know, yeah. You've got something on your mind, haven't you? I suppose I have, yeah. What is it? Look, I can't say. I'm not here and not where you're working. When can you say? I'll come back when you finish. See you later. Everything all right? No. Oh, what's up? I think he's gonna dump me. It's all your fault. What, what kind of drugs are they? It's a fertility hormone. It stimulates the follicles. It's good for your hair, you mean? <laughs> no, the follicles are a little sack, the eggs growing. Listen, I'll have to love you and leave you. I'll call around tonight. You can tell me how you're going on. Are you coming round? Well, Steve thought we could have our tea at yours, you know, cos you missed out on his birthday meal last night. Yeah, well, there's plenty of stuff left in the fridge. Just help yourself. I'll have to go. Oh, good luck, Di. Thanks. Sorry to bother you. What do you want? I'm not here to shout the odds at anything. What can I do for you? I know I've been... I may have been a bit out of order, having a go at Mike and Jackie, mouth and off. But I'm finding it hard to get over it. I'm sure you are, love. But it was a terrible thing that happened, and I know how close you and Clint were. You are going to be engaged, you know? I'm sorry. I've been thinking. It might help me if I could have a talk with Ron. Hear his side of the story. Find out exactly what happened. If I knew that, I'd, I think I might be able to move on. Reading about it in the papers, it doesn't seem real. I know what you mean. So I'm here for a favour. Do you think you could arrange for me to visit Ron in jail? He has asked after you, you know. He's worried about you. That's good of him. He's devastated by this. So do you think he'll see me? I'm going myself in a minute. If you want to come, I could probably ring the prison and get it sorted. Oh, OK, then. Come in. I'll try to wait on the step. Oh, OK. I won't be a minute. Yeah, I'll put that down. Jeez. So, what makes you so sure? Just know. Look, I am an expert at getting dumped. I can see all the signs. My niche threw that drink all over Jerome the other day. Now, that was someone getting dumped. I wanted him to dump here, to choose me. Once you started interfering, he had the choice taken away from him. Now he won't even settle for me as a consolation prize. He's gonna dump me to get back with me. She won't want him back. Have you ever talked to a fella and known that he was gonna dump you? Yeah. You have been wrong about that feeling? At the end of my shift, he's going to come in here and start going to me. It's not you, Nick, it's me. Then dump him first. I can't. Yes, you can. I love him. Do it. Make it easy for him. No, just just make him think twice. I mean, if he thinks that you don't need him, then... I do need him. Look, you are gorgeous. You could have any fella you want. They'd be like flies around muck. I can't do all that <sighs> copping off stuff. I can't face all the getting shattered up crap. I've only ever slept with three men. The first one raped me. And the second one was a one-night stand. But I didn't even have sex with them. I got drunk, I mean, really drunk. I only went to bed with them to prove to myself that I could do it. And I couldn't. And then there's Jerome. He got me through the rape. He forgave the one-night stand that didn't even happen. I'm not stupid enough to think that he's the best man in the world. I just think that he's the only man that I could ever be with.
You've seen it. It's not complete. Susanna Morrissey, loving daughter, mother and sister. <laughs> Is that all my wife comes to? Th seven words and two dates. No mention of me. The wrong name. But Max is the right name. It's half a name. But it's the name that she was born with, the name she died with. Mine reads, Susanna Farnham, brackets, nay, Morrissey. See, it's much better, isn't it? It's more honest. See, I'm not trying to write anybody out of history. Why are they trying to write me out? I don't know. Sadly missed by Harry and Emma and much-loved husband, Max. Reunited in heaven with Matthew and Emily, rest in peace. This is much better, isn't it? Jackie, it is. They, they couldn't even manage a rest in peace. But they're the next of kin, aren't they? So it's up to them what goes on the headstone. Why? Because it's the law. It's me that tends the grave. It's me that tidies it up and replaces the flowers once a week. If I change that headstone tonight, nobody else would ever know. Even so. Who in the whole world does that grave mean most to? Me. Just finished work. Yeah, it's been dead quiet. I've hardly had anyone in all day. I'll allow my soda, please, Nick, while I'm waiting for Steve. Okay. You all right, Lizzie? Great. We had a lovely meal for his 21st. Is he still getting on all right then? Better than ever. Even my dad likes him. What? But your dad always hates all your boyfriends. But he's mellowed since Mum left him. He's less worried about losing me, and more worried about finding a son in law to take over the business. He's not trying to force you two down the aisle, is he? I might not need much for him. The way things are going, I think we'll be engaged before you know it. You think Steve might ask you? Any day now. But it'll have to be quick, or I might ask him first. Do you want a drink? Him. Yeah, go on. Have a large vodka. In one of them days. <laughs> Is she happy? Who, Nicky or Katrina? Nicky. As far as I can tell, she's dead happy. Yeah. That's what I thought. And after all she's been through. Does uh, Nicky ever talk about me and Katrina? Sometimes. And she reckons that Katrina likes you even more than she likes Jason. Didn't really get on with him, did you? Nope. How come? He was always on my case. I mean, he was only looking out for Nicky, I suppose. Just didn't want it to get hurt. And Daddy was the same. Can't blame him, I suppose. She must not have missed him. She does. Still, <laughs> makes life easier for you. Sounds like life with Katrina couldn't be any easier. I've got no complaints. Not one. Well, maybe one. What's that? She thinks I look good in this. She got it for me 21st. I had to say I liked it. Well, it's just not me. Weighs loads and gets on me nerves. Don't wear it then. Well, she'll notice. I mean, she can hardly miss it, can she? Once she'd get upset. Just don't know what to do. The trick is to make her go off here. Make her seem like it's her idea to get rid of her. That way no one gets hurt. How am I supposed to do that? The norm. Nah, Katrina's not the sort to play mind games with. I'll have to just say it. I'll tell her tonight to get it over with. Can't keep carrying this weight round with me, can I? No. I'll see you later. Later. I love them. I know that. And this would have been bad enough if he'd have been a complete stranger, but you're our Jacqueline's best mate. So you must have been gutted when you found out. But Katie, look, I want you to know that I think of you as almost one of the family. You've been visiting our house ever since you were a little school girl. And I promise you, love, we'll all be there to support you, won't we, Anne? Of course we will. Okay. We'll all help each other to get through this, Katie. And you've got to remember, love, it's not your fault. You're not to blame. What do you mean? Well, how were you supposed to know what they were really like? I mean, it was months before any of us saw through. We all thought Robbie was a nice lad at the start, so it's not surprising that Clint conned you. See, that's what they like, these muffin lads. Katie! I thought you'd come here to listen to what he had to say. Well, you thought wrong. I came here so this merchant scumbag can listen to what I've got to say. Something. 
Any biscuits? Oh, you know where the biscuits are. I'm talking about today. Don't you want to know what happened? The scam. Oh, yeah, how'd it go? My pituitary gland is now officially not working. Thanks for asking. That's good, isn't it? it means I can start the second course of injections. Congratulations. Oh, nice one. Oh, why are general elections so boring? I don't agree. There's nothing more important than casting your vote. Yeah, you maybe could liven things up a bit. We could have a party on election night. <gasps> yeah, we could go around all the polling stations with vote for Bev's bar flyers. We get the white screen telly down, and we could have red, yellow, and blue cocktails. <laughs> Lance, I think you're missing the point. And you've got the cheek to sit there and tell me not to blame myself. Why would I blame myself? Maybe he could have put it better. How could it be my fault? I think what he meant was, very often, when people lose a loved one, they feel guilty. You're the guilty one. You killed the person I love most in the world. I'm sorry. I can't even get you back. But taking it out on him isn't going to help. Who could I kill to make you feel as bad as I do? There's only one person you really love, and that's yourself. I love my family, and that's why this happened. Because I was trying to protect them. This happened because you're a coward. A coward with a sawn-off shotgun. I was being terrorised that night by some yobbos at a party on the close. Clint had nothing to do with that. What was he doing in my house then, Kate? I don't know. Did you ask him? I didn't need to. So you didn't? He'd broken in. You didn't ask him. You just killed him in cold blood. I killed him in the dark, in my own front room. You couldn't even see who you were shooting at. He shouldn't have been there. He could have been anyone. He could have been A. I was with him. It was an intruder. I knew it was an intruder. And I was scared. So I used to go. What kind of man? Keeps a sawn off shotgun in the house when his kids around. That was the mistake. Having it in the first place. If I hadn't had it, I'd have probably stayed in the way upstairs and had to live with the shame for the rest of my life. Well, that's best than what I've got to live with. Yeah, well, I did have it and I used it. You are a nasty, twisted, vile little man. Casey, maybe you should go. I've always hated you. I only ever put up with you because of Jackie. Look, this isn't doing anyone any good. It's doing me good. I want him to know exactly what I think of him. Look, the guards are watching. No. Let her get it off her chest. Oh, do me a favour now, are you? Get it off your chest, Katie. We'll get through this together. Don't blame yourself. Don't make me laugh. You introduced us to the Moffat, remember? What? My daughter was beaten up, my son's in a wheelchair, my family were terrorised in their own home. I'm stuck in prison, and all because of someone you introduced us to. But I never blamed you for that, Katie. And I don't want you to blame yourself either, but that thought hasn't even entered your head, has it? You are a murderer. Well, the press think I'm a hero. The jury won't. They'll put you away for years. Can you get rid of her, please? And you know when they do, I will be there cheering my head off. It's all right, I'm going. But just so you know, while you're in here, I'll be out there starting a campaign to make sure you get sent down. Cos you're a major scumbag, Dixon. I hope you die in prison. Jake, I think I know what's been on your mind. Well, It's us, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think we've been going through a bit of a bad patch? Do you? Most couples do, don't they? Yeah. Well, how do you think we can make it better? I don't know. Do you want to make it better? Yeah, of course I do. Do you wish I was black? What makes you ask that? The day, you know, we were on the bus together, and then kids started having a go at me. Yeah, Hugh, you might be going through a bad patch, but it's got nothing to do with a couple of racist toe rags on a bus. Whatever's wrong between us, it's got nothing to do with the colour of our skin. Are you sure? I'm positive. <sighs> Is it sex? Oh, it ain't, Nick. Jay, I've got to ask. We don't talk about it, we can't fix it, can we? It's got nothing to do with sex. Could it be better? Well, it could always be better, I suppose. I know sometimes it would be... I don't know, tense. But it's hard to let myself go sometimes. But I think it has been getting better. I mean, you haven't been holding back as much. And if there's something that I'm doing wrong or... 
do you, do you want me to do? Yeah, the sex is fine. Fine isn't very good, is it? It's great. You'll get arrested. <laughs> what for? Well, I don't know. Desecrating a grave or something? I'd like to see them prove that in court. Now, what's on the original? That is desecration. It doesn't matter what the headstone says. It matters to me. She knows that you loved her, and that's all that matters. How does she know? Well, it's obvious by the way you've been acting. What? What do you mean, acting? You think this is all an act? No. I did love her. I know that. What I want to know is, did she know? Knew? Of course she knows. The last words I spoke to her were in anger. We had a fight. A massive fight. The night she died, I... I came here and I begged her to take me back. I told her how much I loved her. So she knows? But then we started to argue. I lost my temper. I said some terrible things. Did some terrible things. You think it was an accident? It was an accident. I caused it. How? I... I got her into a right state. So was it high? Yes, but don't you see? If I hadn't come round, if I behaved differently, then... then she'd still be alive. You don't know that. You think the night I found her was the same night that the police found her? Yeah. Days earlier. <sighs> but why didn't you tell anyone? Because if anyone else knew, then... then the children would have to know. And how do you explain to a two-year-old what Mummy's dead means? <laughs> hey, come on, Max. This is all just delayed shock. When are you next in? I'll try and make it on Friday. Look after yourself. Oh, I'm sorry about Katie. I didn't know she'd be like that. She's really thrown me, you know. You don't think there's any truth in what she says, do you? With all that's been in the papers, I thought the jury would be on my side, but... Maybe they'll look at it like Katie does. Who do you think's a perfect couple? The mum. Come on, think. Who's the perfect couple? Well, Steve and Trona seem to be doing OK. Steve and Trona have only known each other five minutes. They're still in the honeymoon period. Come on, think. Who's the perfect couple with, like, a bit of history behind them? I don't know. No one, then? My mum and dad. They ever argue? <laughs> yeah. So there was things about each other that they didn't like? Yeah. They're not the favourite couple, then. No. Makes you wonder why we bother, doesn't he? I mean, if we can't be perfect in the long term, then why don't we just go for loads of little short-term things? That way we'd never get out the honeymoon period. That's why I've been thinking of finishing with you. Well, I once split up with a fella at the altar. Can you beat that? Uh, yes. And the last fella that I was in love with beat me up. What about that? Any man who is violent to women is just scum. Lowest of the low. Just my type, eh? You've been really good to me, you have. You've got your own problems as well. Your father's in prison and Mike. And yet, here you are. Well, you've been there for me as well over the last few weeks, don't forget. I haven't had the chance to thank you properly for what you've done for me, have I? Don't mention it. You know, you can't do it, don't you? The headstone thing. Oh, yeah. Hey, Mum. I've, um, I've been thinking about asking you something. Have you? Yeah. That's funny. Why? Because I've been thinking about asking you something, too. 
All right, well, you go first. No, you do. Oh, I don't really know what to say. I'll just say it. Would you mind if I don't wear my bracelet anymore? I just... It's starting to get on my nerves, jangling around on my wrist all day. I know you said I'd get used to it, but I'm just not that keen. I've upset you now, haven't I? I thought you were going to ask me something else. I mean, I'll wear it every now and again when we go out. Get rid of it if you want. Are you sure? On one condition. What's that? You let me swap it for a ring. OK. An engagement ring. What? Well, that's what I was going to ask you, if you should get engaged. Oh, you're joking. I've been more serious in life. I was surprised then, didn't I? I wasn't expecting it, no. We could finish, couldn't we? Is that what you want? If we finish tonight, we could cope, you know. I'd get over you, meet someone else. I don't need you. I never said you did. You think it, though. Because of the rape and me drinking and everything that's happened to me. All that's just made me stronger. Made us stronger too. What we've been through together, it's special. It'll never be better than us, Jay. Yeah, you might get a bit of a buzz for the next couple of weeks, but it won't last. It'll never be perfect. You're never gonna get as close to anyone as me, Jay. No one's gonna love you as much as I do. I just don't get you, Nick. What are you saying? Do you want us to split up or not? All I'm saying is. If we do, we're both going to regret it. Always. Just saying, no, we might be perfect, but we're OK. I think it's OK enough. Maybe it might be all right for now, because we're just taking each day as it comes. We're just drifting. We've got no direction. And how do we get there? Will you marry me? Money. Is that what you really want? Well, like it or not, one day Katie is going to wake up and realise that Clint was scum. I've got no one left to love me or to look out for me. You saved my life, you know. I haven't. I don't know what I would have done without you. Go with your instinct. I mean, I think I want to finish with her, but I can't stand the thought of breaking up with her, so isn't marriage the next step if I don't want out? That's Brookside tomorrow at 8.30. And later tonight, the last and four shocker series, A Dream Holiday Becomes a Nightmare in Ibiza, £99 return at 10.30 after Big Brother. And next up, Never Want to Conform, Nigella Bites into an all-day breakfast.